There's just so many of these media unionization stories, and Politico is another one of them that they have uh, they have organized to um, uh, to form a union there at Politico, and uh, Axios reported on the ostensible reasons why these workers are seeking to unionize and I'm a bit I'm a bit skeptical at their reporting because their reporting makes it out like and I don't I don't doubt that this has some part some some part to do with it but their reporting makes it out like the main reason that these workers are organizing is over editorial decisions that have been made by Politico uh, namely the uh, namely the the guest writing of Politico's insider playbook or whatever by Ben Shapiro last year. Axios Axios is reporting by two people. Now let's let's also remember who they're getting this reporting from. <laughs> it was by two people who are not in favor of the union effort. Uh, that, that does, does make, make a, a difference. difference. <laughs> yeah, right, right. It depends on, it, you know, it makes a difference who you're getting your reporting from. These, The reporting that Axios put out was not from pro-union employees, which is not to say that, you know, anti-union employees are always are, are um, you know, always bad actors or whatever. Sometimes they're just misinformed. But um, these two anti-union employees made it out like the primary reason was editorial decisions, uh, especially uh, Ben Shapiro writing for Politico, which if you know, I mean, if you've listened to our coverage and if you've, if you've actually looked at the facts on the ground about what these media companies are putting their workers for, I'm highly suspicious of that because at the New Yorker, at the New Yorker magazine, which I don't know, it seems like a much more prestigious institution than Politico in my mind, but maybe I'm wrong. Their starting salary was $40,000 before they got their new union contract. I mean, $40,000 in New York City. I mean, that's insane. So I, I am very, very reluctant to believe that the only reason uh, Politico staffers are unionizing is because of editorial decisions. But, but they should have a say over editorial decisions, too, because they're the ones doing the work. So they should have a say over who, uh, who, who they platform. You know, I mean, it's, it should be a collective, it should be a democratic decision, not just the person at the top who owns Politico by virtue of having come into wealth, right? The people who actually do the work should have some democratic say over what goes in to the thing that they produce. I think that's reasonable. Yeah, and I was just going to say, uh, I totally agree with you. I think that's pretty far-fetched to think that that is the main rationale for unionizing. Uh, but I do hope that it does improve the editorial aspect to not just Politico, but New York Times and all these other media organizations. That's one of the exciting things about it is maybe by these journalists and other media workers getting some worker power, that you know may increase their coverage of worker issues maybe even their sympathy to worker issues. Absolutely. One would hope so. And so the reason that I said that about, or or one of the reasons that I I said that about Ben Shapiro is because uh, he, that, him him being made aware of this Axios reporting uh, led to a pretty hot take about what unions do to businesses. So Adam, if you could play that for us. Sure. Hold on one second. Let's get this goofball queued up here. (laughs) All right. An update on. So, yesterday, Axios reported that Politico's newsroom is now attempting to unionize with with the News Guild. Okay, so this means that Politico's staff apparently are now joining, like, the New York Times and a bunch of other left-wing publications in attempting to unionize, which is usually really bad for business. Usually it means that you are artificially increasing the labor rate, it means that you are artificially increasing the, the benefits. It means that you're costing the company more money, which generally tends to remove from the bottom line and crimp growth, right? This is why so many private sector unions have, have basically dismantled at this point. All right, yeah, that's that's all we need to hear. Um, so, Adam, if <laughs> you said that you could vamp on that for a bit. Well, I mean, I what mean, are some of your initial thoughts? I, I have some, I've got some stuff queued up here, but but what are your like initial thoughts well, on the, hearing the, that you know the thing that stood out to me is artificial what the hell right. makes it artificial right um you know workers negotiating with management for a fair contract that seems about as real as you can get what's artificial is someone by virtue of their wealth, you know owns the company and can just dictate at will 
So, that, I mean, that's just asinine to even use the word artificial. That makes no mm-hmm. sense to me. Yeah. What what stuck out to me, there there were a couple of things. Um, the crimping, he's, you know, he mentioned uh, that it decreases productivity, decreases efe- efficiency, uh, nice. crimps growth. And so, I mean, well, there, there's a few things there. So, like, one embedded in that, like, unions are bad because they decrease productivity. So there's an assumption there that productivity is kind of uber alles, right? That productivity is one of the first and foremost things that companies should be striving for. And I think that that's, that's like an assumption that we should complicate. You know, if if it makes a business a bit less productive, if it makes it a bit less efficient to uh, uh, for workers to be able to have safe conditions for them to be able to make enough money to feed their family, then that's then I'm fine with that. Right. Like I have I have absolutely no problem. Like I'm I, you know, productivity for a company is not my first concern. It, my first concern is for the workers and their families and their communities. Um, so I think that's something that's an assumption that we should that 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 we should think critically about. Uh, but the then the assertion, his factual statement uh, does not make sense either because if you actually you know he said like he builds on that, implicit assumption by act, by saying outright that unions hurt productivity that unions hurt efficiency and they crimp growth and i mean that's just on an anecdotal level and then i i have more uh more on top of that but on an anecdotal level you know david was part of the show for a very long time and he still he still helps us out in the background sometimes he works at ula and they have a 100 percent launch success rate ula does that is a 100 percent union manuf- manufactured in alabama rocket ship okay and <laughs> i mean uh that they have a 100 percent success rate uh spacex doesn't have that uh, you know, Blue Origin doesn't have that. These, are, this is a, uh, and and those are both non-union enterprises. But ULA, a union enterprise, has a 100% launch success rate. Uh, and so, you know, it, and, and and one thing that they will point to is the UAW and the Big Three and how oh, Toyotas are better cars than the Big Three automakers. And you know, like I'm not a car guy, like I, but but let's say let's say for the sake of argument that that's true, that Toyota is a better car than a Ford. I, I'm willing to accept that. Uh, it's not the workers who the workers unfortunately at Ford do not own the means of production unless uh, something's happened since I last checked has it Adam I, my understanding is that they don't uh, not that I'm aware of though I would certainly love to hear that news if uh, any Ford right. workers do take over please let us know yeah and and so you know it's not them that are ultimately making these production decisions it's them that are bargaining over benefits and uh and and working conditions but the the production right. decisions are still made by the boss and we know that and and so for another they don't source the materials right i, I mean they don't necessarily even make the design of the product but let's go to another uh let's go to another american uh company john deere john deere contrary to you know in contrast to ford john deere is kind of like the top the top of the line lawnmower right if you you know you want a good lawnmower you get a john deere you want a good tractor you get a john deere john deere is union made by the uaw and the steelworkers the same damn union that makes ford Okay, so uh, and and also there have been there have been studies, surveys of what what unions do to productivity and efficiency, and in fact, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that it increases productivity, especially in certain sectors, uh, because when you have workers, and 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 you know there was a lot of evidence actually that came out during the pandemic about uh, workers when they were able to receive uh, when they received bonuses and the stimulus checks, low wage low wage workers workers receiving the stimulus checks actually became more productive because when you have when you're living paycheck to paycheck when you have all of these all of these things riding on you all of the time am i going to be able to pay this or that or, or take care of this or that it makes you less productive it makes you less productive and so you know being able to uh, uh being able to have a secure income being able to have safe working conditions makes you 
more productive on an intuitive level, and the studies have seemed to, to, to bear that out. And so, you know, the assumption there is wrong that productivity is the best thing, the thing that we should always be striving for, but also... Unions the unions have not been shown to, uh, by and large, decrease productivity and efficiency. They do, uh, in some cases, decrease profits, but what does that mean? That just means it decreases the take-home pay of the people at the very top and redistributes that to the people who actually do the work, okay? So... That's good. As far as I'm concerned, that's a good thing. And uh, so, so anyway, unions are good, uh, and they don't hurt productivity. And Ben Shapiro is a is a dum dum. So that's uh, that. <laughs> that's all I've got to say about that, Adam. Unless you have any anything else that you wanted to add before we switch over to talking to Catherine. No, I think I think you hit it 100. Uh, percent Ben is very much a dum dum, and like you said. If there is some sacrifice in productivity at any point, it is probably because they're actually trying to protect workers' safety and health and well-being, which is a totally reasonable decision to make. Uh, so if you want to see what we're up to throughout the week when we're not doing these midweek streams, you ought to follow us on social media. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Valley Labor Report. We are on Twitter at Labor Reporters. I'm on Twitter at Jacob M underscore AL. If you missed part of the show and want to go back and watch it later, you can search YouTube for The Valley Labor Report and subscribe to our channel. You can go back and watch the full show there and we upload uh, segments and release them throughout the week. We do upload the program on more than 11 different podcasting apps. So to see uh, if we are on your listening platform of choice, you can go to the Valley Labor Report. Transistor.fm slash subscribe. We have a website now where you can buy our hats and stickers. That is the Valley Labor Report.org. And we have one hat left. We had somebody buy a hat last week, and we've got one left. So if you want it, you better go get it. The Valley Labor Report.org. That is $35, including shipping and handling. And finally, if you appreciate our work and you want to help us stay on the air, then consider throwing us a couple dollars a month on patreon.com slash the Valley Labor Report.